as we continue through uh, the sixth chapter of John's Gospel and our great reading this morning from Joshua, uh, we have a great question posed before us. I think one we must all uh, acknowledge every day, one that we must ponder to uh, meditate on, to pray on, to ask the Lord for uh, his grace. And that question comes from the line that Joshua asks the people uh, this morning. He says to them, if it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods of your fathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. To whom will we serve? A great question for us to ponder, will we serve the Lord? Will we serve the one true God? Or will, or will we allow other things to creep into our lives that tend to be, or sometimes we place them to be, more important than the Lord? To whom will we serve? But Joshua responds with a great response. As for me and my whole household, we will serve the Lord. Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. Far be it to serve other things than the Lord. Joshua speaks that great boldness, and I think it's a great reminder, uh, this great question, to whom will we serve? And I think, well, I serve the Lord. I come here with all of you every Sunday, so we must be doing uh, great serving the Lord, uh, which we are. It's good to see all of us gathered here but I think in the small ways, we have to ask ourselves that question every morning. When we get up and we have a choice, do we want to do our prayer or hit the snooze button and spend a few extra moments in bed? Okay, maybe I'm the only one that struggles with that morning question, but okay, a couple laughs. I'm not the only one. <laughs> but it's those little things. Am I going to serve the Lord uh, only when it's easier, only when I feel like it, or uh, the other things that can slide in? Well, I'll get to the Lord later. Well, I'll say that extra rosary tomorrow. I can always get to that. There's other time. I'm tired. I'll just sit in front of the television. Uh, uh, all those other things, surf the web. Those other things that can creep in to take that precedence. That, uh, it's, that slow fade sometimes when those other earthly gods, if you will, their earthly focuses creep into our lives for fame, fortune, our Pride gets the better of us, or greed, distraction, laziness, uh, a difficulty. These are all the struggles, all the things that can prevent us from serving the Lord, from making him the God of our lives, not just on Sunday, as uh, I think I fell into in high school. Yeah, okay, I'm holy on Sunday the rest of the week. I kind of, you know, do what I want to do. Well, that didn't work so well. And then we have to ask that question, what is the Lord calling us to? Lord, how can I come to serve you? And when you ask that question, be careful, because you might be standing in front of a congregation preaching someday. That's what happened when I decide to serve the Lord. I'm with you lovely people. But the Lord wants to use us, wants us to come and give all of our lives to be with him, to serve him. For us to make that daily attitude that, yes, I will come to serve the Lord. I will come to believe that Jesus Christ is the true Son of God. That Jesus Christ is the bread of life that came down from heaven. That when the teachings are difficult, I will surrender my will to that of my heavenly Father that we might say yes to the Lord in a way that we might follow even when those teachings maybe are difficult for us, but to know that they come from God who is love, who wants to bring us to that great paradise of eternal life. That the Lord sets before us some difficult teachings, but with that he wants to give us his great grace, and with that comes the Eucharist. And many ask, uh, when I talk with students and things, they ask, well, what separates a phone call a few weeks ago? Someone wants to know what separates uh, us Christians from each other or other religions. I mean, if it's all the same God, does it really matter who we follow? And the answer is yes. Yes, God gives uh, all of us his grace, those who've been saved in baptism, that he bestows the grace on our uh, 
Christian brethren, but what is missing is the seven sacraments, and most importantly, the Eucharist. That's what separates us mainly from the rest of our brothers and sisters in the Christian faith, is that we believe that Jesus Christ, his very body and blood, come on this very altar today. The transubstantiation, when Jesus transforms that simple bread and wine into his body and blood, and this for us is the source and summit of our Christian lives. The Eucharist is the greatest gift that Jesus has entrusted to his church. Last week, we celebrated that great feast of the Assumption of Mary, and so we took a little break from the Gospel of John. And it's, uh, I love Our Lady, I'm glad we did that, but we missed a great line last week in the Gospel that helps us to understand this week what is going on in the Gospel. That Jesus told the apostles last week that I am the bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. This is that great crux of our Christian faith. And then we come to our gospel today. And many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, The saying is hard, who can accept it? That if we don't uh, see what comes before last week, what we missed, this line this week doesn't make sense. That Jesus uh, acknowledges that many struggled with that teaching. That maybe we struggle with different teachings of the church that come from the Lord. And so I encourage us to study them, to learn them, read the beautiful documents of the church. If there's something we struggle with, let us then invite the Lord into that question to help ask him for the help that we might understand instead of what happens to many of the disciples in the gospel. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former ways of life and no longer accompanied him. Many found it difficult, uh, the teaching of the Eucharist. Many found it hard to conform their lives to what Christ was calling them to, a deeper discipleship, a deeper, deeper understanding. And so maybe we find ourselves there as well, and so I encourage us to stay and to ask the Lord for that deeper understanding, that we might decide today whom we will serve. Will we serve the Lord who comes to bring us those great graces every day of, under, of understanding? And Jesus could have said, okay, I acknowledge the teaching's difficult. Okay, come on back. Let me go ahead and uh, loosen it for you. Let me lower the bar a little bit. I'm sorry, it was a little intense. No. Jesus, with love, allows them to go. He allows them to go, and then he turns to the apostles, and he asks them that great question, do you also want to leave? That he will let them go, that he gives us free will to choose him or to choose earthly gods and other things. And our patron, St. Peter, one of my favorite saints, I think that's why I ended up here with all of you, but anyway, St. Peter gives us that great response. As Joshua responded, my house, my family will serve the Lord. So Peter comes to the Lord. Yes, he didn't fully understand all that the Lord was going to work through him or all of those things, but he responds with great confidence. Peter's lines back to the Lord, Peter says, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Let us always keep uh, St. Peter's words at the forefront of our mind. But Jesus asks, will you serve me today? Will you be my disciple? As the second reading tells us, will we serve each other? Will we be models of Christ in our care for each other? That we might be united as one, as two become one, as Jesus comes one with his church, us, the bride of the church. Will we come to follow him? 
that Jesus truly is the master who has our best interest at heart, who wants to bring us eternal life. That Jesus truly is the Holy One of God, the bread of life. And so let us then this day ask the Lord for that deeper grace, that we might respond every day with that great confidence that yes, Lord, myself, my family, my household will serve you this day. The one true God who gives us his very body and blood for our salvation, who gives us the bread of life. Let us stay with the Lord always to invite him into uh, our questions of faith, to ask him for the deeper understanding that we might always follow where it is that the Lord leads us, that we might stay with him, the one who brings us eternal life.